The new year brought with it a new superintendent of public instruction for the state of California. Tom Torlakson replaces Jack O'Connell, who served in the position for nearly a decade. Mr. Torlakson is a former California assemblyman and science teacher, and he faces the monumental task of lobbying the state legislature and Governor Jerry Brown to restore funding to state education that was victim to massive budget cuts. KPBS education reporter Anna Tentakalis talked with Superintendent Torlikson about education in this new year. So, Mr. Torlikson, you declared a financial state of emergency earlier this month when it comes to state funding for K-12 education. Was that merely symbolic, or does that alert come with uh, mandates or help for local school districts? Well, I wish I could call in the National Guard and commandeer billions of dollars that we need in our schools, but it was more symbolic in terms of saying, truly, our schools are in a state of emergency. The cuts have gotten to that severe of a level. Now, the K-12 education, though, um, I think in some people's mind have been kind of protected this time around with Governor Jerry Brown's proposed spending plan. Um, is that true, or could you elaborate on what the status is for K-12 education? Well, first, schools have given far greater in proportion to other parts of the state budget in the last few years. $18 billion has disappeared, cut. That's one-third of schools' funding. This year, the governor is saying we have to balance it. It shouldn't just all be cuts, and he's had fewer cuts targeted at the K-12 system, but there are still hundreds of millions of dollars of less money, which means cuts, to the schools and a $2 billion rollover or deferral of payments. So frankly, the schools are facing a, a tremendous challenge, and I'm unfortunately afraid we're going to see uh, tens of thousands of pink slips again coming out uh, in the March deadline uh, because of the lack of money. Now, Governor Jerry Brown has also indicated one way to help the situation is by calling for a special election and to extend tax initiatives. Yes. Tell me specifically how crucial that would be for K-12 education, that, that uh, special yes. election and extension of tax credit Anna, it initiatives. Is, Anna, it is absolutely essential that voters of California rally behind that. This is what's different about this budget. It's real. It's not smoke and mirrors. Uh, the governor's being honest with us about the severity of the problem. It's not pushing it off to the future. Uh, it does depend on a balance. Instead of just cuts, cuts, it's let's continue a level of taxation or investment that voters have already uh, put forward. Let's vote yes to continue that $8 billion package. Uh, without that, the schools, again, would be facing $2 billion of additional cuts. I don't know how you do it. We have one of the shortest school years in the modern world. We have the most crowded classrooms in this nation. Uh, we're already seeing a number of schools on the urge of uh, bankruptcy and problems. And so given the, again, the financial climate, on the campaign trail, you set forth some priorities, things you'd like to do, um, uh, extending career technical education programs, preschool for, preschool for kids, uh, math and science. Mm -hmm. How do you expect to do anything at this point as state superintendent, given the fact you really don't have any money? Well, first of all, I'm a teacher, so I'm an optimist, and I believe, you know, in the time of a crisis, we need to take a opportunity to reorganize things, and we shouldn't just freeze. We, we have to deal with the crisis. We have to deal with what has to be done to balance the budgets between now and, and next year. But we should be planning for the future, and I'm tasking the Department of Education and all the bright and talented employees there and school districts across the state to bring your innovative ideas. We can do some things without money. We can do some things that are just smarter in the way we approach learning in California and set up this, the place where we know that California will rebound. We're resilient. We're going to come back. And the new California that emerges from this crisis will be stronger, brighter, uh, more hopeful, and more creative. It sounds like the, the bottom line is trying to do more with less. So what kind of message would you have for parents, teachers, given the situation? Well, for parents, please be involved with your school. If you haven't already taken the time to be there at back to school night and learning what's going on in your child's classroom, please engage in that way. Encourage your social groups that you are part of, your church, your uh, service club, whether it's Kiwanis, Rotary, Seroptimus, get involved, the Chamber of Commerce. We need creative partnerships with the schools. That's something I'll be promoting very big is getting the business community more involved, helping our schools succeed, helping them financially, helping them with professional 
skills and, and teaching that they can impart with our students. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Torlakson, for joining us today. Thank you, Anna.